this even works. All right. How's everybody doing today? Good. And all right, we still got a whole day of presentation, talks to go. So I figure, why don't we do things a little bit differently to spice things up a bit? So let me start by asking this question. How many of you have written an experiment before? I'm not saying writing an abstract of how experiment should run, but actually writing some code and need to run it. Some things can show up across the room in front of your participant, and that's your experiment. So show of hands, how many? All right, we've got a clear amount. All right, so for those of you who raised your hands, you're in the right place. For those of you who didn't, well, someone who worked for you, or with you, will want to know this. Okay, so recall the last time you're coding up an experiment. Okay, you're coding it up, or in a presenting pipeline. Have you ever had this moment of, hmm, you know what, the DSP function I did the other day for another experiment could really be helpful here. You see, lots of the stuff can actually be shared between experiments, but why do we always do things in this waterfall fashion? We set up data streams, we collect some data, we train our model, we test it more, raise and repeat. Because, I mean, we've all been there. Reusing code can be tedious. Say you build this amazing gaze visualizer for your screen-based eye tracker, but now you're moving, moving on to VR, but oh no, now the gaze vector is in 3D, what should you do? So lots of times, starting from scratch is easier. But today, I want to share with you something that we build that can help you build experiments in truer modular fashion. It is a platform or ecosystem that makes it natural to share components between experiments with lots of off-the-shelf ingredients that you can pick and choose. Say you need EEG data, time locked on to fake stations. Well, there's a building pipeline for that. If you need speech recognition, well, there's a building script as well. All right, so welcome to Fizzola <laughs> Dun dun dun. dun, dun. All right, so why don't we just like jump right in? <laughs> All right, to set an actual experiment. So here we're adding the eye tracking screen. All right, and we all know eye tracking has topology and gaze data, and gaze vector, they are on different scales, so we're gonna put them onto different groups, so you can see them better. Next up, we're gonna add a microphone, so you know what our explain is saying. We're gonna declutter our workspace and move the signals on different spots on the screen. And next up, we'll bring in fMRI data, bucket over a structural scan, and know all that uh, those signals are synchronized across the board. Next up, we're gonna add some scripts. The first script is gonna detect fixation. And all of these are in Python, so you can use your favorite libraries like NumPyPy for sure. Um, the second script is going to take fMRI data and pupillometry time log on the fixation given by the first script. And it's going to predict if the participant has seen a target or not. And here, the task is a virtual shopping task. Participant going around and looking for a target. In this case, it's coffee beans. So you see when the, when the participant sees coffee beans, I call coffee beans, target probability is gonna show up. Show up to one. Okay, so what you just saw is how Fizzolab XR can help build an entire experiment. And now we're gonna break it down to pieces to see the little ingredients that you can use, take advantage of for your experiments. All right, well, there's a lot. So I will just give a few. The first is fixation detection. You give it the eye tracking data, and it gives you fixation. It works in and out of VR. We also have object detection. If you give it webcam data, well, it detects objects in the real world. It also works for virtual cameras in game engine, like Unity. And putting everything together, you got a whole cell multi-model physiological experiment. And it also works for your run-of-the-mill brain-computer interface, like a Peter Henry spell. So at this point, you might be start scratching your head, okay, so this is all going well, but how fast does it run? Can it handle my data throughput? And here's some actual data. So in terms of uh, the speed at which this all updates are, uh, this is internal buffer, actually runs pretty fast. And another metric, the speed at which it bounces off the visualization FPS is also 
more than satisfactory. All right, so the next question that naturally arises is how does it hook up to your data sources? Say you got webcam or microphone, well, it connects automatically, and for most physiological sensors, it's plug and play. Well, so PhysioLab XR is this versatile Python-based platform that has that's easy to use, and we try very hard making sure of that. It has extensive documentation and tutorial videos that teaches you how to build computer computer interface with it. And multi-model, physiological, closed-loop experiments, which are something that we all care about. Thank you. <laughs> all right, and before we wrap, let me give a big shout out and uh, kudos to all of our amazing contributors and team members back there and without whom, none of this would have been possible. Raise your confidence.